See to that, sir. Maximum security from midday to day. No one allowed in without ministry permission. Right, sir. Oh, it's yourself, Mr. Conway Henderson. I might have known as soon as they issued instructions for maximum security that you would turn up. I have a special pass from the minister. Oh, you scientific correspondent. You must have a brother there or something. Yeah, maybe I have. Well, can I come in now? All right, sir. Any matches or cigarette lighters? Oh, just a moment, sir. Sit down, will you? I'll need to have a look at the soles of your shoes. Well, what are you looking for? Secret panel? Just a check. There's no metal caps that might cause a spark. Oh. Well, I've got a gold filling in my tube. You better keep your mouth shut about that. Uh, keep your mouth shut. Uh, a wee joke, see? Oh, yes, yes, I see. <laughs> Well, tell me, I gather there's going to be a rocket launching here in the near future. You're from the newspapers, so maybe you can tell me. Hello, Valerie. Hello, Mr. Henderson. Well, perhaps you can tell me what's happening around here. I don't know. We only got here this morning. I'm looking for Jimmy. Jeff and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? He hasn't been here, but if Master Jimmy's running loose in the rocket site, then something diabolical is bound to happen. Oh, there's the alarm. No, no, no. You stay here, Mr. Henderson. Hello, Jeffrey. He's in his office. Where is it, Jeff? Rocket launching pad, sir. Main control room to launching pad. Wedgwood here. There's an unauthorized person in the vicinity of the moon rockets. Security patrol to arrest immediately. The launching pad. We can see that from the window. Can't see anyone. Main control room. Yes. Oh. Right. Thank you. They've got him, sir. He's in the guard room now. Has he been identified? Yes. It's Jimmy, sir. Jimmy? How did he get there? Have him brought up here immediately. All right, everybody, false alarm. I thought I told you to keep an eye on your young brother. I'm sorry, Dad. He was only away a few minutes. Yes, the last time we left him alone for a few minutes, he ended up a quarter of a million miles away in outer space. We won't let it happen again. You're not going to get the chance to. From now on, I'm keeping the three of you just where I can see you. You come along with me. Come on, young Jimmy. We had a lot of trouble with you the last time you were here. I hear you, sir. No harm done to him. All the rockets. All right, God. Leave him to me. Yes, sir. Jimmy, we told you not to wander off. I was only showing hand on the rocket. No, I've just left an important briefing conference because of you children. I'm going to see it. Doesn't happen again. You come with me. Sorry for the delay. Was it something serious, Wedgwood? Just a mouse. <laughs> now, these are my children. And when they're not driving my security guards to distraction, they proved immensely helpful here on Buchan Island. This is Professor Meadows from Canada, the world's expert on selenography. Hello. What's selenography? It's an expert on the moon. Dr. Connell from Belfast, our geological chemist. How do you do? And, of course, you all know Ian Murray, our radar and communications engineer. Hello, you lot. This is Jeffrey. How do you do? Valerie. How do you do? And the only person actually to go near the moon, Jimmy. And this is Hamlet. Yes, I've heard a good deal about you. I can see I'm in very distinguished company. Now, you children don't know what's happening, do you? Well, my friends here and I are going away for three weeks. Where to, Daddy? We're leaving here for the Sea of Vapors. Sea of Vapors? Where's that? Now, Jimmy, you're the only person to ever be near it. Sea of Vapors, Jimmy, is here. So you're really going to land on the moon? That's right, Jeffrey. But I might add, there are no vapors. In fact, there's no sea. As far as we know, it's just a flat, dust-covered plain. Anyway, that's going to be our home for the next 14 days, or if you like it, the next one half lunar day. Yes, but can you carry supplies for 14 days and four people in one rocket? No. No, we have two rockets. Moon Rocket 1 and Moon Rocket 2. MR1 will carry our expeditionary force. MR2 will contain only supplies and equipment. And who will go in that one? George, the automatic pilot. Professor Wedgwood, I'm not quite clear on this point. Will both rockets come back to Earth? No, only MR1 will make the return trip, we hope. 
MR1 will carry enough fuel first to take off from the Earth, later to take off from the Moon, and finally to use its reverse motors for landing on the Earth again. But MR2, since it doesn't have to carry fuel for the return trip, will be able to carry the weight of all our supplies. And what if the supply rocket goes astray with you? That's hardly likely, since we should be landing first and be guiding it in, but if anything should go wrong, we'd have to return immediately. Yes, that all sounds very nice, like a railway timetable. But you haven't told us yet how far these rockets have been tested for such a journey. This is the test, Dr. Holmes. I see. The one I went up in went all right. <laughs> As a recommendation from our test pilot. <laughs> but I might add that these rockets are bigger and more powerful than the one you went up in, Jimmy. Daddy, can I ask you a question? Certainly, Daddy. When are you going? Tonight. The rockets are being finally prepared now. Launching will be at exactly 18.30 hours Greenwich Mean Time. That gives us only seven hours. Now, we were just starting our final checkup, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, mm. There's a lot of activity on the launching site. Have you any idea what time Professor Wedge was going to finish? Well, he's still in the briefing conference. He'll be very busy all day. Well, perhaps I could see him this evening, then. Well, by this evening, he'll be... He'll be where? Look, Mr. Henderson, you know I can't talk to the press. Oh, of course, of course. Never mind. I'll find out. Mm. Hello, Mr. Henderson. Ah, I see I've got some friends here. We never knew you were here. I did. Well, well, well. It's nice to see you three again. Oh, by the way, Jeff, here's that electronic screwdriver I've been promising you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I hear you've been in on the briefing conference. Did they want your advice? Well, they got onto all sorts of technical stuff, so we came out. I didn't want to come out. I offered to go up again, but... Oh. Go up where, Jimmy? Oh, uh, he means if anything's going up again. That's right, Mr. Henderson. If there was a rocket going up, do you think you could persuade Dad to let me go with them? With them, Major Man? Well, now, let me see. I imagine they will be expert people. I mean, no room for passengers except those with an expert knowledge of their subject. Like Professor Meadows. Now, she is an expert on the moon, isn't she? You know about it, then? Of course he doesn't know. He's only guessing. That's right. And my guess is your father's going to take a group of people in a spaceship around the moon, leaving Bucken Island this evening. Right? No, wrong. Oh. Oh, well, never mind. I hope to try again. How long's he away for? We're not as to tell you where he's going, but he'll be away almost three weeks. Uh-huh. Well, that's two days to get there, two days to get back, 14 days in between. That's half a lunar day, the longest time a man can stay in any one place on the moon's surface. You don't mean to tell me that your father's going to land on the moon? I haven't told you anything yet, Mr. Henderson. Nobody's guessed. To land on the moon itself. Something men have dreamed of for centuries. What do you think they'll find up there, Mr. Henderson? <laughs> the stepping stone to the stars. Yes, but what's it going to be like up there? Oh, mountains higher than anything we've seen on Earth. Arid deserts of dust. Deep chasms. And absolute silence. And craters. Vast craters up to 150 miles across. You know, your father will probably find out what caused those craters. And he'll also probably find out where the moon came from. Well, where did it come from? Well, here's one theory. Come over here. Now, many scientists believe that the, the moon broke away from the Earth when the Earth was still molten. Now, if so, it probably came from around here, where the Pacific Ocean is now. Now, do you know what else that's called? The fiery belt. Oh, yes, fiery, because there are volcanoes and earthquakes right there. Yeah, there. that's right. There's uh, Japan, the Fiji Islands, across to the coast of Chile, San Francisco, and Alaska, where there are also hot springs. Now, this seems to be where the Earth's crust is thinnest, as though a, a huge chunk of granite had been scooped out of it. When did this happen? Oh, probably about two billion years ago. Gosh, I wish I was going this time. Jimmy, what you did was dangerous enough. But to make a moon landing and to get back alive. Your father's very brave. They all are. Jeffrey, can you give me a moment? Jeffrey, I want you to get a hold of your father. Can't you get him on the intercom? No, I don't want to use the intercom. I don't want the others to know. He's taking the briefing conference on a tour of inspection. See if you can find him. All right, Mr. Field. Jimmy, Val. Look, Dad's finished in his office now. So you can go in and start unpacking our things. All right, aren't you coming to help? No, I've got to take a message to Dad. You go on. Something wrong, Mr. Field? I don't know yet, but don't let the others know. If you can get your father aside, tell him it's about MR2, the automatic supply rocket. I've been testing for the last hour, and there's something wrong with it. All right, I'll get him immediately. Yes, and hurry. Here, Mike, what do you make of this? Well, come on, Jimmy. Aren't you going to help me get our things into Daddy's quarters? I want to give Hammond to 11's it. He wouldn't eat anything for breakfast. Come on, eat up. 
Don't be silly. He doesn't understand you. I don't know what you want to bring that smelly thing up here for. He's got more right than you have. He's been round the moon. We know what it's like, don't we, Hamlet? Valerie, you know how big these rockets are? Of course they're big. I know, but I was thinking there should be a place you could hide without anyone knowing. Some place you could stow away. Well, you forget any ideas like that, Jimmy Wedgwood. Jeff and I are going to keep our eyes on you this time, so there. All right, it was just an idea. Well, you're not going to. Wouldn't be possible anyway. They'd soon find out. Jimmy, when you went round the moon, did you see it very clearly? Well, I saw it through the periscope, but I was still hundreds of miles away. Why? Well, I was just thinking. Everyone says the moon's dead, but we don't know for sure, do we? What could there be up there? Well, there may be something that no one has ever thought of, because no one could possibly imagine it. Progress on MR2, Jim. They found a fault in the relay. It's being repaired now, sir. Okay. That's it, Mr. Field. My electronic screwdriver came in handy. Thanks for your help, Jeffrey. Useful things. MR2 to control room. Repair now completed. Thank you, MR2. Fifteen minutes to go, everybody. Well, Jane, I'm handing it all over to you now. You do the countdown and fly MR2 six minutes after we've gone. Good luck. Good luck, Professor Wedgwood. Take care. I will, don't worry. But um, just if anything should go wrong, I want you to break the children. I wouldn't want anyone else to go. Nothing must go wrong, sir. It won't. Well, we must be off now. We'll be in radio contact with you at 2,000 miles and continuously after that. Right, sir. Goodbye, Henderson. Goodbye, Professor. And good luck. Thank you. Come along here and you'll miss the bus. Coming, sir. Oh, here's our fan club. Now, look, I brought you three here, not just to see the fun, but because I really want you to help Jean. All right, but we soon and come up and help you. <laughs> not this time, Jimmy. Maybe in a year's time, we'll be running tourist trips. Goodbye, then, Dad. And if you get lost, you'll be here. Good man. Bye, Valerie. Goodbye, Daddy. Bye, Jeffrey. Good luck. Ten minutes to zero, everybody. Well, we're off. We'll see you all in about three weeks' time. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, 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 how can he be so cool when we're probably none of us going to come back? But Dr. Connell, didn't you... Didn't I volunteer? Why, well, of course. What scientist could resist such an opportunity? But as a scientist, I can also calculate the odds of survival. Don't worry, <laughs> Doctor. You'll be all right. Well, that fortifies me. <laughs> Clear fueling base. Clear fueling base. Stand by to ignite primary motors on MR1. Stand by to ignite primaries, MR1. Goodbye to Scotland for a while, Professor. Here we go. Well, this is home for the next two days. Mm. I'm sorry it's a bit cramped, but I expect we shall sleep most of the time. I will know the drill. I know anti-gravity bunks during takeoff. After about 900 miles, we shall be in free flight, and from then on, we wear our magnetic boots to stop ourselves from floating about. Time check here. MI1 to main control room. We are now in nose cone. Time check, please. 65 seconds to zero. We are now igniting secondary motors. Thank you. See you all after takeoff. Sixty seconds. Fifty-nine. Fifty-eight. Fifty-seven. Fifty-six. I think Dr. O'Connell's a bit frightened. So would I be. There's nothing to be frightened of. Do you think Dad will be all right? Of course he will be.
Well, there she goes. That's stage one motor gone. Now it's number two, eh? Yes, I'm just going to do the final checks now. Oh, it is a loose screw. Jeffrey, see if you can fix that with that new screwdriver of yours, will you? Yes, of course. Well, that's funny. Don't seem to have it. Well, not to worry. There's one in my drawer here. Yes, I know, but I had it when I went to do MR2. Primaries MR2. Ignite secondary motor. Hold it, Jean. MR2 automatic pilot's cut out. Must be complete short circuit. Main control room to engineers. Check the automatic pilot and MR2 immediately. All right, I'll go over there. Keep me distance on MR1. All right, I'll do it. Distance? 2,000 miles. Pull up MR1. See if Professor Wedgwood's recovered consciousness yet after the launching. We'll have to tell him. Oh, shall I do that? Yes, please. Right. Hello, MR1. Buckin Island calling. We have an urgent message for you. Hello, MR1. Buckin Island calling. Buckin Island calling. They can do something. That rocket's got all that supplies in. And the oxygen, I wonder what caused it. I don't know. Why, that's the one that Jeff was working on. Hello, MR1, Buckin Island calling. There's a serious fault in the control mechanism of the supply rocket. It can't take off. Just a moment, please. Over. Do we know yet? Just a moment. Are you sure? Can't it possibly be done here? See. The automatic pilot will have to be stripped out completely and returned to London for repair. It'll take at least six days. Hello, Buckin Island calling. MR2's automatic pilot is out of service for six days. Over. Six days? But that rocket contains most of our... I... If that doesn't get through, the expedition's finished before it's even started. MR1 calling Buckin Island. What's the cause of the trouble? What's gone wrong? Over. Will you wait, please? Over. This is the culprit. So we're doing the transformer mains tra terminals. I left it there. I forgot it. Jeff, how could you? Well, never mind, Jeff. It's too late now. I wonder. Kennedy. Yes? If that equipment was stripped out... It could be controlled manually, if that's what you mean. Well, how long would it take? For about three hours. Right. Right? Hello, Professor Wedgwood. The rocket can take off under manual control in six hours from now. May I have your permission to act as pilot? Certainly not. You've had no experience. Over. I use the pilot jet plane, Professor. I'm not just a science reporter. Over. I can't risk it. Over. But can you risk the failure of the expedition and the lives of your crew? Over. You need much luck to succeed, Henry. Not as much Over. luck as you'll need, Professor, without those supplies. Oh, come on, Professor. You know I could pilot this rocket. Over. He's got the theoretical knowledge, sir. You can't pilot a rocket on theory. But isn't that what we're doing, Professor? All right, Henson. Bring it up if you think you can. But I can't guarantee to get you back. Uh, right. Well, may I pick my own crew? Over. If you want to bring a couple of technicians and they're willing, well, you'll need them. Have you found out the cause of MR2? No, not yet. We'll let you know. Over and out. Now, Jean, what about beds, food and water for the crew? Yes, right. I'll organize that. Won't you need space? Well, there are reserves to you. It's already in there. Right. Then all I've got to do is to pick my crew. Now, first, I need a good radio man. A Jeff, do you think you could do it? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, but are you sure you want me? After what I did? Yes, but you better leave your screwdriver at home this time. Well, I think the two of us can manage. What about me, Mr. Henderson? Jimmy, what could you do up there? I've been up before. I know what it's like to be without gravity, and none of you do. I know what it feels like I'm afraid like not, Jimmy, not this time. But, Mr. Henderson, I don't weigh much. Your experience might be useful, Mr. Henderson. Yes, you've got a point there, I suppose. All right, then, Jimmy. But I don't know what your father's going to say. Then we're all going. Do you think it's safe to would fit me? Oh, no, Valerie, I'm afraid you can't go. Why not, Mr. Henderson? You're a girl, you'd be frightened. But Professor Meadows is a woman. That's different, that's grown up. Oh, please, Mr. Henderson. Valerie, you don't seem to realize the risks involved. I shouldn't really be taking these two. Now you stay here and help Jean, eh? She needs you. Yes, Valerie, you help me with the computer, hmm? 
Oh, it's not fair. Never mind, Valerie. We'll bring you back a bit of news. Yeah. All right, now, we've got to be ready for takeoff in three hours from now. Main control room. Kennedy here. MR2 is all set for manual control. All right, Kennedy. Mr. Henderson and his crowd here just coming through now. Right. I think it's a rotten shame Valerie not staying around to say goodbye to us. It yes, doesn't like her. This is the lift, Mr. Henderson. We have to go up one at a time, see? That's funny. The lift should be down, not up. Oh, Kennedy must have sent it back up. Ah, there we are. All right, Jimmy, you go first. You know the way. Well, we shall very soon be off now. Five minutes to go, everybody. Can I have the position of the first rocket? MR1 distance now, 68,000 miles from the Earth's surface. Still on course. Main control room to MR2. Are you in the nose cone now? Yes, we are now in the nose cone. Right. Ignite primary motors on MR2. Ignite primaries, MR2. All right, come on, boys. Get down on your anti-gravity bunks. This is the way to do it, Mr. Henderson. Just lie on your back as though you're in place. All right. Right, are we all ready? I'm ready. So is Hamlet. Oh, Jimmy, what did you bring that for? He likes it. Final touchdown. 15 seconds. 14, 13, 12. We all have to go seven, to sleep now for five ten, minutes, so don't nine, try and get up. Eight, seven, Mr. Henderson. Six, yeah. Five. Do you think four, we'll make it? Three. We got to, Jack. Two. We got one, to. Zero. 